Endless expanses of the solar system astound our imagination with their variety of shapes and features. Some worlds host massive plains of volcanic rock, others are shrouded in thick layers of gas, while still others are locked beneath icy shells. Surprisingly, that frozen armor doesn't necessarily indicate a dead world. On the contrary, it can hide active processes in even entire subsurface oceans. A true jewel among such mysterious bodies is undeniably Jupiter's moon, Europa. At present, it attracts the attention of many scientists because, beneath its icy layer, may lie an environment capable of preserving or even generating signs of life. Though Europa may appear calm and less visually striking than its volcanic neighbor upon closer inspection, it reveals a unique realm whose hidden depths hold secrets worthy of the best science fiction. Humanity gained reliable information about the four largest moons of Jupiter more than four centuries ago. In January of 1610, Galileo Galilei, using a telescope of his own design, spotted points of light near the giant planet that appeared to move along an orbit and occasionally disappear behind Jupiter. Realizing these were individual bodies revolving around a different center rather than Earth, Galileo provided clear proof against the geocentric model. These objects became known as the Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Over subsequent centuries, scientists studied Europa primarily through ground-based telescopes. It seemed less bright and showed lower contrast features compared to, for instance, Io. Even so, some theorized early on that Europa's surface might be a sheet of ice covering liquid water beneath. True insight into this enigmatic moon only arrived in the era of robotic spacecraft in the 1970s, during the Pioneer and Voyager missions, and subsequently through other probes. At first glance, Europa might not impress with its sheer size among solar system moons. Its radius is about 1,570 kilometers, making it slightly smaller than Earth's moon. Yet Europa's density, around 3.0 grams per cubic centimeter, is relatively high for an icy body, suggesting a blend of rock and ice. Its mass, roughly 65% of the moon's mass, is less than that of Ganymede, or even Io, yet it is ample enough for Europa's gravity to hold on to its global water ice layer. Comparing Europa to our moon shows their diameters don't differ drastically, although the moon is still more massive overall. The key difference, however, goes beyond numbers. It lies in the interior composition. The moon lacks enormous water reserves, leaning more toward a rocky crust, while Europa's subsurface is believed to harbor a vast ocean. In orbital terms, Europa completes a revolution around Jupiter in about 3.55 Earth days. Fascinatingly, it participates in the orbital resonance with Ganymede and Io. Each time Io orbits Jupiter four times, Europa does so twice, and Ganymede once. This resonance is significant because Jupiter's tidal forces, coupled with the gravitational interplay among the moons, warm Europa's interior, preventing it from being permanently frozen. To understand what makes Europa so remarkable, one must peer inside the moon. Current models suggest Europa has a metallic core, likely iron or an iron-sulfur mix, surrounded by a rocky mantle. The most intriguing layer, however, is its thick outer shell of water and ice. Researchers estimate this shell could be 15 to 25 kilometers thick, with the upper portion being fully frozen and the lower portion near the mantle likely warmed from below and partially pliable. A key mystery lies in the possibility that beneath Europa's solid ice crust, there is a global ocean of liquid water. Data from NASA's Galileo spacecraft, as well as gravity measurements and geological surface features, support this idea. A warm liquid environment under the ice could contain many elements essential for life, at least in microbial form. Still, whether organisms exist, there remains an open question. Notably, if this ocean is truly tens of kilometers deep, the total volume of water on Europa could exceed the sum of Earth's oceans by twofold or more. Despite Europa's smaller overall diameter, it may possess a higher proportion of water than Earth. This characteristic is the primary reason the Moon commands such intense interest from the scientific community. Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 opened humanity's first chapter on Europa in the early 1970s. They flew past Jupiter's system, 
sending back only limited resolution images. It was Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 in 1979 that delivered higher quality images of Europa's surface, revealing puzzling cracks and line-like streaks hundreds of kilometers long, crisscrossing the icy crust. The real detective story began in the 1990s, when the Galileo orbiter, making multiple passes around Jupiter, performed a detailed study of Europa. It measured magnetic field variations, suggesting a subsurface saltwater ocean. Galileo also gathered data on Europa's ice composition, capturing images of large white reddish streaks apparently formed by crustal fractures and fluid upwellings that froze at the surface, enriched by salts and other substances. Following Galileo's success, other spacecraft visited Jupiter's system in the 2000s, although none were primarily dedicated to Europa. NASA's New Horizons, which passed Jupiter en route to Pluto, and the Juno probe, mainly focused on Jupiter itself, contributed to some observations. Even so, Europa largely remained an unsolved puzzle until the early 2020s, when agencies announced more targeted missions. From orbit, Europa appears almost perfectly smooth, lacking obvious mountains or craters, at least none as we know them. In reality, there are plenty of surface irregularities, but the most striking features are the lengthy colored lines and fissures that encircle the globe. Large impact craters are uncommon, indicating a relatively young surface in constant renewal. Spectral analysis shows that Europa's surface is predominantly composed of water ice, though certain regions contain sulfur, magnesium salts, and sodium. Most striking are the red streaks, places where the ice takes on orange-brown or even reddish hues. It's believed that these markings result from subterranean brines enriched with minerals. When exposed to the vacuum of space, the water rapidly freezes while the dissolved substances remain on the surface, imparting varied yellows, oranges, and browns. While the exact thickness of Europa's ice crust remains uncertain, some findings suggest it might be as thin as 10 kilometers in certain areas. Elsewhere, the ice could be much thicker. Researchers pay special attention to the relatively smooth regions with fractures, which imply that warmth occasionally rises from below, melting or softening the underside of the crust and allowing fluids or softer ice to break through. One would presume that Europa, with its modest gravity and continual bombardment by charged particles in Jupiter's magnetosphere, has little to no atmosphere. Surprisingly, some observations suggest it maintains a very thin atmosphere, primarily composed of oxygen. Clearly, this is no breathable atmosphere. The surface pressure is so low, it's effectively a vacuum. The oxygen likely arises from the dissociation of water molecules under high-energy radiation, along with charged particles hitting the surface from Jupiter's magnetosphere. Some of the resulting components escape into space, while a fraction is briefly trapped by Europa's weak gravity. Interestingly, spacecraft have occasionally detected disruptions on or near Europa that might indicate geysers or water vapor outbursts. If, like Saturn's moon Enceladus, Europa indeed hosts eruptive plumes, these could explain how its sparse atmosphere is periodically replenished and how water is redistributed from one region of the moon to another. The reason Europa stays warmer than one might expect at such a distance from the Sun, lies in the tidal influence of Jupiter. The giant planet's immense mass constantly stretches and compresses Europa's interior and crust along its elliptical orbit. This tidal heating generates mechanical energy that transforms into heat, melting ice in the lower layers of Europa's crust. Orbital resonances with Io and Ganymede also play a part. Io, closer to Jupiter, experiences even stronger tidal flexing and practically boils with volcanic activity. Although Europa does not exhibit such intense surface eruptions, the gravitational tug of war is still sufficient to keep its lower layers warm. Ultimately, the subsurface ocean is Europa's main trump card. If it exists, then its depths could contain hydrothermal vents that supply chemical elements. On Earth, such vents teem with life that thrives without sunlight fueling speculation that Europa might harbor similar habitats. Whether Europa could support life has intrigued experts for decades. On one hand, it lacks atmospheric pressure and temperatures friendly to earthly organisms. 
and its massive ice sheet presents a formidable barrier. On the other, if a vast ocean does lurk beneath the crust, it might be shielded from lethal cosmic radiation, and tidal or volcanic processes could create warm pockets that facilitate chemical reactions. On Earth, scientists have discovered microbes in unbelievably harsh environments, deep sea vents, areas with extreme sulfur or methane concentrations, even near boiling temperatures. While none of that confirms life on Europa, it does highlight the adaptability and resilience of life forms. Consequently, Europa often appears on the short list of the most promising locations to search for extraterrestrial biology within the solar system, alongside Enceladus, Saturn's moon, and the subsurface zones of Mars. Acknowledging Europa's importance, space agencies worldwide are devoting substantial effort to specialized missions. In particular, NASA is developing the Europa Clipper, scheduled for launch in the mid-2020s. It will orbit Jupiter and conduct multiple close flybys of Europa, conducting in-depth analyses of its magnetic field, gravity, chemical composition, and ice structure. Simultaneously, the European Space Agency, ESA, is pursuing the JUICE, Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, program. Although its primary target is Ganymede, it also has plans to fly by Europa. One of the mission's priorities is determining the thickness of Europa's ice shell and detecting possible hotspots or plumes. Meanwhile, there are conceptual discussions about missions that would do more than just fly by. Missions that might attempt landings or even probe deep into the ice using drilling systems. Such undertakings remain highly ambitious. Drilling through tens of kilometers of hard, possibly crystalline ice is an enormous challenge. However, if future technology does make it possible, we could witness one of the greatest leaps in the history of astrobiology. Viewing Europa's map in enhanced color reveals older, darker ice regions and relatively fresh lines or areas where the surface is more geologically active. Uh, occasionally, strange dome-like structures rise above the plains. Scientists propose these might be local upwellings of warm ice from below, known as diapirs. This presents a fascinating geological puzzle. Given Europa's modest mass, it presumably lacks large stores of radioactive elements to produce significant internal heat. Instead, Jupiter's external massaging is intense enough to keep the crust in motion, cracking, and allowing warm ice to push upward from the interior. Over millions of years, the orbital resonances likely evolve, continuing to pump energy into Europa's interior. Surface temperatures on Europa are extremely low, from about minus 160 degrees Celsius down to minus 220 degrees Celsius, depending on sunlight and latitude. In such cold conditions, ice behaves like solid rock, yet beneath the crust, heat from below may raise temperatures near the melting point. It is precisely this contrast that makes Europa's geology so striking and complex. Though Europa may seem a solitary world, it actually comprises part of Jupiter's multifaceted ecosystem. The giant planet's magnetosphere, spinning and interacting with the solar wind, creates intense radiation belts. Europa traverses these zones, subject to bombardment by energetic particles. Because of this, its top ice layers undergo radiolysis, molecular breakdown caused by radiation. Some fraction of the ejected molecules and ions could escape Europa altogether, forming a faint particle cloud around it or even merging into Jupiter's ring and dust systems. Observations suggest that icy or gaseous fragments from Jupiter's various moons might affect the overall structure of the planet's magnetic field, potentially forming weak rings or tori of matter in the giant planet's vicinity. Meanwhile, Europa shares an orbital resonance with Io and Ganymede. Due to the 1 to 2 to 4 ratio, they periodically align, intensifying tidal distortion. Without this resonance, Europa would likely be colder and less geologically active. In essence, the entire cluster of Jupiter's moons resembles a finely tuned clock mechanism, where every cog contributes to the ongoing stirring and warming of the interior. So why is Europa unique? It's not Jupiter's largest moon, nor is it as explosive or colorful as Io, nor does it rival Ganymede's scale or Callisto's giant craters. Yet it has something that could eclipse all volcanoes and mountains, 
a strong possibility of a subsurface ocean, this feature alone places Europa at the forefront of future space exploration. Scientists do not rule out the idea that along the ocean floor, in areas of increased temperature and pressure, hydrothermal vents could be providing chemical nutrients. On Earth, such black smoker vents are teeming with life that survives without sunlight, lending credence to speculation that Europa might harbor similar pockets of biology. Upcoming missions like Europa Clipper and JUICE promise more insight into the thickness of Europa's icy shell and whether water vapor truly jets through surface cracks. If confirmed, these geysers may offer a unique opportunity to study Europa's ocean indirectly, sparing spacecraft from drilling through miles of ice. A probe could potentially sample the ejected material for organic compounds, salts, and minerals. Europa is, in a way, a mystery in a wrapper. Its sleek, icy exterior appears deceptively tranquil. Yet beneath the surface, processes may be underway that could reshape our understanding of life in the cosmos. And if humanity has learned this much about Europa's appearance and inner workings in a relatively short span of history, imagine how many secrets remain once our technology allows us to delve into its most remote recesses. Ultimately, exploring these kinds of celestial bodies takes us beyond conventional models. We typically look for life where there is sunlight, air, and warmth. But Europa defies these presumptions, showing that life might flourish in the darkness beneath an ice layer, constantly bathed in radiation from Jupiter. Every piece of new knowledge brings us closer to grasping not only Europa's true nature, but also the broader principles underlying the emergence of life. We can only guess at the tremendous possibilities lurking beneath this moon's icy veil. Yet it's already clear Europa stands among the key mysteries of our solar system and might answer our most fundamental questions in biology and planetary science. If we ever confirm life beyond Earth, it could well be found here, in the slightly warm depths of an ocean hidden beneath perpetual ice. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It's the best way to show your appreciation for my work and inspire me to create more exciting content.